In this video, we're going to explore the chain rule, but in a much more concrete spatial sense. We're going to imagine a hillside. So this is our stereotypic example for a function of two variables. The function is going to depend on x and y, and the function is simply x times y squared. Now, as a typical height on planet Earth, we would represent the z as height in meters. But the distances that we're traveling, and we think of this x and y as a location on a map, it's entirely reasonable that that has units of length, but different units. We're going to use units of kilometers. We're then going to relate the position in x and y to time. We're going to be walking. And specifically, we're going to be mm. We then relate x and y to time. The way we're going to relate them is that we're going to be walking, and we're going to be walking along a straight path on a map. If we have x of t equals t and y of t equals 3t, what we can do is a quick sketch of the x and y values we get back here. We'll just plug in some numbers for time. And if x is equal to t, x is 0, 1, 2, 3, nothing exciting happening there, except this would be hours and this would be kilometers in location on the map. And similarly for the y values, it's 3 times t. So we go back to the t, and we compute our y value, which would be 0 to start with. And then 1 gives us 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. Again, thinking of this in hours. And these is kilometers and kilometers. And we can plot that on our graph here, like so. Voila. Let's take one more stab at that. There we go. All right. So we can imagine we start here at time zero. Then we walk, we walk, we walk, we walk. We're here at time one. We walk and we'd be up here at time two. And so we can generate a map of where we're going to be, or here in this case, we would be seeing where the path lies. And we can imagine ourselves as a moving dot tracing out that path as we walk along. Now a natural question to ask next is, if this is a map and there's actually a hillside over top of this region, well how quickly are we moving uphill or downhill? And that is captured perfectly by dz dt. That's the rate of uphill or downhill movement. And the units of it are just the units of z, which is meters, and time, which is hours. That's a little different from dx dt. dx dt would be in the units of x, which is kilometers on the map, versus time in hours. And dz dx is meters, and I'll put this in brackets here to make it clear, meters of altitude for or divided by kilometers of x travel. Now, it doesn't make a lot of sense if we're talking about these in the abstract. Meters per kilometer doesn't give us enough information. But if we add the extra ingredient of what kinds of kilometers, well, it's partial with respect to x. So it's kilometers of distance traveled in the x direction that generates a change of meters in the altitude. Now, we are able to address our question, which is, how quickly are we moving up or downhill one hour into the hike? So we note again that t defines what our x value is, or our x position on the map, and t also defines our y position. But we need both x and y to determine our z value. What that lets us do is decompose the derivative of z with respect to time. And notice this is a regular derivative. If I know what time is, then I can know what z is. There are the intermediate values, though, and that's where we see partial derivatives. Z changes because X changes, but then X changes because T changes. And we see again that sort of cancellation in the form here. And likewise with Y. And so here we have the chain rule expressed outwards for how Z changes with time, broken into the intermediate variables. Now we just need to fill in the blanks. The partial derivative of Z with respect to X can be obtained from this formula here. So z equals xy squared tells us that the partial derivative of that with respect to x 
is just y squared times 1. And similarly, when we take the y derivative, we have a y squared, so it'll be 2y, and there's an x multiplier for that derivative, 2yx. Then we can also take a look at x with respect to time. Well, that's actually pretty easy. It's just the derivative of t with respect to t, so that will be 1. And dy dt, going up to here, y is 3t. Take the derivative of that with respect to time, we get 3. And the only ingredient we need to fill in, we still have variables here, not values yet. At t equals 1, that means x equals 1 and y equals 3 times 1, so y equals 3. So we're going to synergize a lot of this and put the values in. dz dt in general is going to equal this partial derivative, which is y squared, times dx dt, which is 1, plus the y derivative of z, y derivative of z, 2xy, 2yx, doesn't matter, dy dt, times 3, all right. And then at t equals 1, x equals 1, y equals 3, we obtain the derivative value dz dt is going to equal y squared, well that's 9 plus 2 times x times y times 1 times 3 times the 3 at the end there, that's 9 times eight. 9 plus 18, and that is 27. And keep in mind the units, meters per hour, rate of change of the height on this hillside with respect to the time and the travel time is being measured in hours. Let's bring that back to the picture. We had the path that was starting at 0, 0, went through 1, 3. That gives a line like this as our pathway remembering that this is the location that we reached at time one. We were moving in this direction over time. And what we can see is that we're going up, we're about eight meters high right now, but we're gonna be going up easily to 20 in the next, well, takes us a half hour to get to here. So this would be a change in time of 0 0.5. And so we can see that we're going up fairly quickly. And if we did a rough ratio of the change in height over the change in time, we would be getting very close to 27 meters per hour. Of course, it would change a little bit because what we get here in the derivative is the value just exactly where we are right now. Freeze frame, the instantaneous rate of change, whereas if we measure over different points in time here, between different points in time, we would get the change in z or the change in t would be an average velocity instead. But the power here is that we can write out a formula for the height and define the surface, and then also talk about our position on that surface over time and easily get or easily combine those values to get the rate of change of the end product, our height, with respect to the real input variable at the end, which is time.